Humankind has been trying to understand dreams and interpret them since we first gained consciousness. Everyone from psychologists to philosophers to theologians. Collective spirituality often describes dreams as prophetic. They are messages from unseen sources, given shape but not substance, and delivered through a series of images and symbols and emotions that humans can understand. Psychologists have competing theories about dreams as anxieties or the subconscious mind trying to solve a puzzle that the conscious mind may not even know exists. Dream logic, in narrative form, is a set of loosely defined rules that make up the structure of a story that exists outside of the physical world. This means either witnessing someone making his way through an actual dream and treating it as reality, following it as narrative design, or witnessing someone traversing some other abstract concept as if it were the tangible world. Among the most notable examples in film are those directed by David Lynch. And among those films, none are more entrenched in a dream than his 1977 surrealist horror film, Eraserhead. Lynch's fascination with the grotesquerie of human beings and biology followed him around his career, such as with The Elephant Man. With this in mind, one could presume that his knowledge of Joseph Merrick influenced the deformed child. Other influences may have come more directly from the art world, as with the 1970 Spanish film and dream logic narrative Tristana, as well as the works of Franz Kafka, an author of Living Nightmares. In the beginning of the film, a worm creature comes out of the mouth of Henry, and the man in the planet pulls a lever that sends it into a puddle. Henry visits the home of Mary, his girlfriend, and has dinner with her parents. Henry cuts open a tiny, bleeding chicken, and yes, I know all of this sounds crazy, bear with me, and Mary's mother tells him he impregnated Mary. She has given birth to a terrifying creature that may or may not be human. The child cries so loudly that it keeps Henry and Mary up at night. In frustration, Mary leaves, forcing Henry to take care of the child. It is sick, struggles to breathe, and resists eating food. He has further visions of the man in the planet and the woman in the radiator, a singing, dancing lady who stomps on the worm creatures. Henry has sex with the beautiful girl across the hall, but soon finds her with another man. After another series of visions, all of which will be discussed in detail later, Henry decides to stab the child to death with scissors. And because Renegade Cut is a PG-rated series, I'm not going to show that, but just assume it's the worst thing you have ever seen because it is. The man on the planet begins to struggle with his levers, and Henry reunites with the lady in the radiator for reasons that I swear I will try to explain. Comparisons to Eraserhead can be made with similarly confounding Lynch films like Lost Highway and Mulholland Drive, two films that rely heavily on dream logic. However, there are two major deviations as it pertains to Eraserhead. First, both Lost Highway and Mulholland Drive have a recognizable real world upon which all the dreams are built. In Lost Highway, the real world is the first half of the film, whereas the fantasy world, the dream, is the second half, a fugue state of a convicted man who not only wants to be free, but wants to be innocent. In Mulholland Drive, it is the opposite. We see the dream first, and then we find ourselves stranded in reality. In Eraserhead, we appear to be trapped in the dream the entire time, allowing us no respite or real-world parallel upon which to attach the symbols of the dream world. Maybe dream is the wrong word? More like subjective perspective. Henry may not actually be asleep in the literal sense. Bear in mind that when I say dream, I mean the internal machinations of the psyche representative images that correspond to the genuine. The second deviation of Eraserhead in relation to the rest of Lynch's oeuvre is that he seems to want us to figure out Lost Highway and Mulholland Drive. They are both complex, but the clues are not drowning in a bottomless ocean. We can see them. In fact, in the home video release of Mulholland Drive, he presented clues outside of the film itself to help viewers uncover the mystery. Eraserhead is far more bizarre and far less grounded than Lynch's other famous works. The director has said two things of this. First, any interpretation of Eraserhead is essentially correct, because dreams mean different things to different people. Second, almost in contradiction, he claims that nobody has figured out his interpretation of Eraserhead. What follows is only one interpretation. It may or may not be his, but as he himself has pointed out, it is no less valid than any other. 
The most common interpretation of Eraserhead is that we are witnessing the anxiety of becoming a parent, and it's not hard to see why. There is a demon child who ruins the lives of its parents, and it literally replaces the head of the main character. Fear of being supplanted by youth is rather common. This aspect of Eraserhead is both part of the picture, certainly, but also tacitly rejected by Lynch as the complete interpretation. Lynch has said that nobody has figured out Eraserhead completely, thereby indirectly rejecting this interpretation. If the most widely known reading, known even to Lynch based on an interview, is outright said not to be Lynch's exact intention, then we need to look deeper. Lynch rarely says what his films mean, but his words have gently assured us of what Eraserhead is not, at least not completely. Bear in mind that it should not be dismissed, but rather seen as a piece of the puzzle, and not the complete tableau. We can say that Eraserhead is not about raising a child thematically, or in a let's figure out the director's hidden code kind of way, but narratively, yeah, it's about raising a child, because that's superficially what we are actually seeing. So it is valid, just not complete. As a baby, it's at the hospital. Mom! And you're the father. Anyway, Eraserhead does not take place in our reality, our conscious world. Even outside of the visions Henry receives, in what is superficially real within the narrative of the story, people do not behave like human beings. Babies never look like that and roasted chickens don't come alive and bleed when cut. We are in some kind of other realm during the events of the film. We need to start with that as our bedrock for understanding Eraserhead. The most likely explanation for where we are when this is happening is the mind of Henry. We are seeing his perspective, his mind trying to reconstruct his life, and piece together what went wrong, and how to solve his existence. We must be cognizant of the fact that if everything is happening inside Henry's mind, then every environment and every character is also Henry. There is a saying, you are everyone in your dream. The characters in your dream aren't real. You are the only inhabitant of your mind. Eraserhead is surrounded by psychological repression, purposefully blocking memories that are too painful or too terrifying for the conscious mind. The brain knows that the primary instinct of all life is self-preservation, and in service to this end, it can perform psychological miracles like convincing itself that something did not happen. In the film, repression is symbolized by the window in Henry's home. Throughout most of the film, it can be seen to have bricks covering it. Several times over the course of the film, the camera lingers on the window. Nobody says anything, we just look. The film is trying to tell us something. Later in the film, we actually see something happening outside the window. There is a puddle, and two people assault someone else. Henry is staring at this attack from his window. The bricks are suddenly gone. The attack is representative of a repressed emotion or memory. Keep in mind this happens immediately after Henry has a vision. In this vision, Henry's head comes off. The boss of a factory takes it to a machine operator, and the operator extracts a sample of Henry's brain and inserts it into the machine. This machine creates pencils, using Henry's brain sample as the eraser heads. The mind is like a writing instrument, jotting down memories and feelings and creating the entirety of someone's life. But it is also the eraser head. The brain has the ability to conceal memories that are too painful, emotions that are too horrifying, instincts that are too embarrassing. The brain can erase what was written. Henry looking out his window connects to the man in the planet looking out his window at the beginning of the film. Much like Henry's room, there is a puddle outside of his shack. Henry screams, perhaps seeing or experiencing something awful. The man in the planet reacts, pulls the levers, and creates the worm creature. In summation, Henry experiences something terrible, and inside his mind, the man on the planet, the keeper of his memories and emotions, gives birth to fear. The child itself, this monster created by Henry, is the physical manifestation of fear. So what's behind the bricked up window? Well, let's explore the possibility that this may be a fear of intimacy. Besides a child, a product of sexual intercourse, there are other ways in which intimacy and fear are connected in the film. Mary has a conniption fit when her mother brings up having sex with Henry. Then the mother comes on to Henry, which terrifies him. 
The thought of having a child terrifies him too. Henry's later attempt to have sex with Mary fails. The product of their physical relationship, the baby, drives Mary away. Well, you'll come back tomorrow? All I need is a decent night's sleep! There are lots of other sexual references, but let's move on. Light and dark are central to the film. Henry's world is portrayed as a dark planet. Ominous. Foreboding. He wanders through a dark, industrial wasteland. His home is dark. Everything is dark, except the brief moments of hope. The lady in the radiator is bright white, with a white substance adorning her face. She kills fear, stepping on the sperm creatures that would eventually grow into fear children. When Henry kills the child, the same white substance covers it and drowns it. And in the end, once he has conquered his fear, he is reunited with the lady in the radiator in a bright, white landscape. A heaven. Since cold is associated with the negative, it makes sense that the lady in the radiator lives somewhere warm. David Lynch once said that Eraserhead is a dream of dark and troubling things. But because he doesn't want to give away what it all means, he left something out. It is a dream of dark and troubling things, but also a dream of defeating those fears. 